So 2018 was when I finally got a real quote. And that is the last time that I, I haven't gotten a raise since then. And every, each and every project that I have, I have to fight for that. You still have to fight. I have to fight for that. Yeah. What does that do to you? That's why I'm not excited anymore. It takes the It takes fun out all of, it. of that away. Oprah Winfrey finds herself in the hot seat as actresses like Taraji P. Henson call her out for what they claim is insufficient pay. Surprisingly, heavyweights like 50 Cent and Denzel Washington are throwing their support behind the accusers. The drama developed after Taraji's appearance in the 2023 musical drama The Color Purple, a production backed by Oprah. The story takes a twist when Taraji breaks down in tears during an interview with Gail King. Oprah's best friend on Sirius XM Radio. This emotional moment made fans emotional and sympathetic to alleged pay disparities faced by black actresses in Hollywood. Taraji, not one to shy away, later took to Instagram to set the record straight and talked about the challenges black women face in the industry. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, and getting paid a fraction of the cost, Henson said. Henson has been vocal about this long-standing Hollywood issue, yet she was forced to knock down online sleuths who blamed the color purple shortcomings on Oprah Winfrey, the film's lone black female producer. So, how did a discourse about industry standards for women of color turn into a story about two black women arguing? In a recent SAG-AFTRA chat moderated by Variety's Angelique Jackson, Taraji P. Henson spoke on some behind-the-scenes drama. Despite the global triumph of Empire, the Fox musical drama she headlined for six seasons, Henson confessed to hitting a career roadblock. The actress, famous for her role as the feisty cookie lion, snagged a Golden Globe and two Emmy nominations for her efforts. Fans were buzzing about a cookie-centric spin-off, but dreams were crushed when Fox gave it the boot and attempts to shop it around flopped. All they wanted was another cookie show and I said, I'll do it, but it has to be right. The people deserve, she's too beloved for y'all to fuck it up. And so when they didn't get it right, I was like, well, that's it. And they had nothing else. You're all fucking fired. It took me years to get there. You are the prize. Don't you ever forget that? You are the talent. You are there, check. Don't ever forget that they work for you. If they are not, somebody else will do it. I stayed with the same team for years. Taraji P. Henson isn't holding back, and the internet is buzzing with her latest revelations on the harsh realities faced by black women in the entertainment industry. The actress has kindled a firestorm by shedding light on the persistent pay gap and challenging work conditions she's endured on set. According to Henson, industry pay disparities are just the tip of the iceberg, highlighting the systematic unfair treatment black women entertainers routinely face. Now, she's peeling back another layer, exposing the toll this industry has taken on her mental health. Henson talked during an emotional serious XM radio panel interview with Gail King on December 19, 2023, sparking a chorus of fellow actors validating her experiences. Sitting next to the film's director and leading stars, Henson said, she's tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, and getting paid a fraction of the cost. Taraji P. Henson is no stranger to airing her grievances about her paycheck. This time, she's revisiting an old wound. Back in 2019, she spilled the tea on the less than satisfactory $100,000 she pocketed for her role in David Fincher's The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, where she shared the screen with heavyweights Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. Not one to stay silent, Henson flexed her negotiation skills, pushing her salary up to $150,000. But let's not forget, this was still a far cry from the cool half a million she boldly demanded. I asked for half a million, that's it, Henson vented. I want to make this very clear. I'm not saying that Brad or Kate shouldn't have gotten what they got, Henson told Variety at the time. They put asses in seats, so give them their money. They deserve it. I'm not saying they shouldn't get what they're getting. I was just asking for half a million. That's all. That's it. When I was doing Benjamin Button, I wasn't worth a million yet. My audience was still getting to know me. We thought we were asking for what was fair for me at the time. Taraji P. Henson, the no-nonsense star, managed to secure a $150,000 paycheck through some tricky negotiations, although it fell significantly short of her initial $500,000 target. Remember when she snagged an Oscar nomination for her standout performance? It's mind-boggling that even someone of her caliber faces racial hurdles in the industry. Now, imagine the grind for newcomers trying to break in, and hold on to your seat for this one. There are whispers accusing Oprah, a prominent figure in the black community, of contributing to discrimination between black and white actors. But why hasn't Taraji called out Oprah directly? Well, dropping names could be a career-ending move. 
Just look at what happened to the Oscar-winning Monique. Hollywood is a tricky game, indeed. Monique, the comedian and Oscar winner, is exposing everything ahead of her upcoming Netflix comedy special. The precious star is revisiting her standing in Hollywood, particularly concerning her relationship with Oprah Winfrey. Recall that Monique had accused both Oprah and Tyler Perry some years back of spreading rumors about her being difficult to work with when she opted out of the Oscars campaign press for Precious. This move didn't sit well with director Lee Daniels, leading to a fallout that she eventually patched up last year. The fallout also prompted opinions from other heavyweights like Tyler Perry and Oprah, contributing to Monique feeling blackballed in the industry. When people look at me, they say, you are a fat black woman. How dare you speak up? You just should be appreciative. We invited you to the party. The conversation that we're kind of leaning into now is about this whole, what does what it start? I feel like it may have started around Precious. And it says that you were, uh, and you put this out here, you were paid $50,000 for the role. Yes. So upon approaching that role, it wasn't like a big money play. It was more so of what, camaraderie at the time? I'll tell you what it was. It was me saying to my friend to Lee Daniels, yo, you gonna trust me to do this? He was like, yo, that shit is crazy, right? So it was me saying to me, this is something different. And I can't believe this person is gonna trust me to do it. I wasn't caught up in the money because it was my friend. And it was also my friend that said, it's $50,000, but you get 5% of the movie. So it was taken under that. That's what the deal was when I did it. I never did it looking at, oh, we, it's all this money. Because as I said to Lee Daniels, when he thought, and this is to show you how little black women are paid in this business. This is after the Parkers. This is the success of the Parkers and other things. And Lee Daniels says to me in my dressing room, bitch, I got you $50,000. I really got you paid. And I said to Lee, I said, Lee, I say this with all humility. Do you know I make $50,000 in one hour of stand up when I walk on the stage? So I don't want you to think for a second that this is a big payday for me in doing this film. This is me saying, brother, I appreciate you even asking me to do it. But in his mind, $50,000 was a lot of money to pay a black woman. So it's a lot of little things that are being said that we miss. But if you really listen, you understand just how devalued we've always been in this industry. And please know that was not a deal. That that was at a time where I did not negotiate that. What would you have negotiated? Well, I don't know what, but what I would have definitively done was gotten um, a better understanding of what back end really meant and where it was in conjunction to where he was offering because I'm still going to put her first from a standpoint of this is your man. If that's your man. It all started during the heated Precious Awards campaign, where tensions reached their height. Rumor has it that the trouble began when Monique refused to promote the film without compensation, going against the advice of esteemed director Lee Daniels and producers Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey herself. The feisty comedian stood her ground, prioritizing her family over jetting off to the glamorous Cannes Film Festival to drum up publicity for Precious before the intense 2009-10 awards season. Monique recalled all that drama. I said, Oprah, I'm doing a talk show. I'm doing a comedy tour. I have a husband and I have babies. I have a little bit of downtime and I'm going to take advantage of it. So I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. So we mutually agreed to disagree. That was it. Next thing I know, I am considered difficult and hard to work with. It has emerged that Monique's own brother, Gerald, was the perpetrator of unspeakable abuse against her during her formative years, from the tender ages of 7 to 11. As a result of his despicable actions, Gerald was rightfully sentenced to 12 years behind bars because not only he essayed his sister but another girl as well. It is no wonder that Monique struggled to come to terms with such a traumatic experience. If Oprah was watching this, what would you tell her? I would say, Oprah Winfrey, you know what you need to do and stop hiding behind what you call was negative comments, 
what you call, oh, I don't even deal with things like that because what people are beginning to do is see you for who you are. Where Oprah Winfrey and I have a problem is Oprah Winfrey called us up and she said my brother wanted to come on the show and talk about him molesting me and he wanted to tell other parents how to look out for molesters. My brother Gerald is a charmer. So my mind thought was, because she said, do you want to come on? I said, I don't want nothing to do with that cat. I said, nigga, I know it's up to a scam, but people can change. And who am I to say he hasn't changed? It might really be different. So I don't want to get in the way of that. I just don't want nothing to do with it. She said, if you don't want me to have your brother on the show, I will cancel the show. No show will happen. But I wanted to call you up to see how you felt first. When I hung up that phone, brother, I looked at my husband and I said, that bitch is all right with me. That's a real... Cause she kept it because she... Because she didn't have to call me up. She didn't have to say my brother was coming. She could have just ran with the shit and let it happen. I dig her for that. Monique talked on her not-so-friendly encounter with Oprah, revealing that she got a half-baked apology from the TV icon in 2014. The awkward reunion went down at a bash, celebrating Lupita Nyong'o, marking the first time the feuding duo shared the same space since Oprah aired Monique's family drama on her show. So let's rewind. Oprah showcased Monique's brother Gerald and parents, especially the one who confessed to abusing her during their childhood. But with Monique's fame peaking post-Oscars, Wanfrey called her to inform her that her brother had called her and he wanted to come on the show to let her know how parents can watch out for predators, Monique says. She then said, Do you want to come on the show because he wants to apologize to you? I said, Oprah, I don't want no part of that. As a result of their appearance, Monique tried to get in contact with Oprah again to express her hurt and betrayal, but it was to no avail. And I said, you know you and I need to have this conversation. Why would you have my mother on your show? This is from... In front of everyone. So for all the women that were there, the one thing, people can say I'm loud, they can say I'm tactless, they can say I'm, I'm overbearing as Oprah Winfrey has considered me, but what they've never said is she's a liar. Ain't nobody ever said Monique is lying. So for all the women that was there that night, they know exactly what was said. And I said to her, how could you have my mother on your show? That's not what we discussed. And you don't understand what I've had to walk through since you've had my mother on your show. See, I got to deal with women coming up to me in the Walmart saying, Monique, your mama ain't shit. I got to deal with that. Now, I got to defend. They ain't lying, but I still got to defend it because that's my mother. Right. Okay, daddy, but that's the truth. But I still got to defend it. You don't understand what position you put me in doing that. So now this is my moment to talk to you. And what she did was took the cowardly way out. I won't call her a coward. I'll say it was cowardly, but it was okay. And she said, if you think I did something wrong, I want to apologize. And what my husband taught me a long time ago, an apology is not something that you think you think you need to give. If somebody else thinks you need to give it, it's what you feel. So she came off like Mother Earth that she is. If you think I did something wrong. No, Oprah, it ain't what I think. You did do something wrong. You maliciously and you had full intentions of having my parents on your show and not saying anything to me. Was that for ratings? It seemed like she exploited the situation. Were you just exploiting me? There are some sisters in this business that are about it, about it. Regina King was there that night. Angela Bassett was there that night. Lynn Whitfield was there that night. Mm. Curry Washington was there that night. There are some sisters that are truly about it, about it, because they sat back in those chairs. And they were looking like, what we know Monique ain't doing is lying. That's what we know she ain't doing. So when it comes to Oprah Winfrey, let me be clear so people I'm a little black fat girl from Baltimore, Maryland. And I saw this fat black woman on a TV show called People Are Talking that was a local show. And she had big shoulders and a big bush and big feet like me. And I said, wow, when I grow up, that's what I want to do. And then we took a field trip to that studio. 
And I hugged that woman. And I said, when I grow up, Miss Winfrey, I want to do what you do. And she said, you know, you got to work really hard. So the day I walked out on that stage to the Oprah Winfrey show, and I was promoting Roscoe Jenkins. And after that show, that woman hugged me and said, when I look at you, I ain't doing nothing but looking at me. And then when I remind her that that's what she said to me, she says, oh, I say that to everybody. Well, then what does that make you? Everybody reminds you of you. But Hollywood elites like Oprah are unstoppable, and they can destroy careers and lives in a matter of time. So now you know what would happen if Taraji dared to speak up directly against these Hollywood elites? Even Martin Lawrence, the seasoned actor, has experienced the industry's wrath firsthand. He understands Hollywood's cutthroat nature and believes that the same sinister game is being played with Monique. Martin, being no stranger to adversity himself, has not only offered Monique invaluable career advice, but has also provided unwavering support during her darkest days when the industry seemed to turn its back on her. Bob Lawrence is a guy that showed everybody you can make it from D.C. to Hollywood. I had a personal stake in his success. Every time he did something, it made me feel inspired and really good. And he was always real nice to me. You know, when we did Blue Streak, we were promoting it, and Martin had a stroke. He almost died. And then after that, I saw him. I was like, oh my God, Martin, are you okay? And he said, I got the best sleep I ever got in my life. That's how tough he is. So let me ask you this. What is happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough will be on the street waving a gun, screaming, they are trying to kill me? What's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going after it? A weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. Ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person. So they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. Over a decade has passed since Monique's Oscar win, and her career hasn't reached the heights it should have. Blame is squarely placed on Oprah, who seems to have played a major role in hindering Monique's success. Surprisingly, Monique is still demanding a public apology from Oprah and Tyler Perry. Remember when I said earlier, I've never seen so many cowards and black men in this business? I would have to put my brother Tyler Perry in that. I've never worked with Tyler Perry. Okay. I never worked with Tyler Perry. Um, the way that that relationship came about okay. was firstly, Daniel was making the call because he was mad because <laughs> he thought Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey was trying to steal his movie from him. So those were the first phone calls I was getting, baby. And he was reading them for life. OK, calling them all things, all the things. Right. So then Tyler Perry and I had a conversation at the Hoodie Award. At the time, it was called the Hoodie Award, when they were trying to get me to go do all of this press internationally. And for those that don't know, who put on that Hoodie Award? Steve Harvey. And you won't believe that more black celebrities joined the ranks of those allegedly mistreated by Oprah. Did you know that Taraji P. Henson's co-stars, including the talented Fantasia Barrino and the incredible Hal Bailey, weren't paid their due by Oprah? Shocking, right? Fortunately, Taraji and others are not standing alone in this battle. They've enlisted the support of industry giant Denzel Washington and a cadre of other outspoken celebrities, raising their voices, calling out Oprah, and standing against the unfair treatment of hardworking black artists. Denzel Washington has consistently been a rock for black artists in the industry, speaking passionately about racism and its impact. His genuine commitment to helping the black community is evident, especially through his work with Save Africa's children. On the other hand, there's Oprah, flaunting her wealth and labeling it as generosity, a move that raises eyebrows. Denzel's sincerity stands out, making it clear that he's not just for show. He fearlessly calls out the wrongs in Hollywood, unlike big names like Oprah, who, according to some, twist things and push black actors into roles that compromise their beliefs. Remember that eye-opening interview Denzel did? He spilled the beans on the movie industry's bizarre and often dark side. In 86, he turned down a role where his character, a black man falsely accused of attacking a white woman, was supposed to get electrocuted and hung, yet somehow emerge as the hero. What really rattled Denzel was the laid-back vibe of some big Hollywood names during auditions. He said, man, they are offering me $600,000 to play the nature they couldn't kill. Being on stage, the, the, the amount of training we have had, you know, Sidney Poitier, I was very fortunate. In fact, he came to, to uh, 
No, I talked to him before that, but it, I think it was when we came to Soldiers Play. And he said, you're good. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and, and wow. I, I got a part in a movie in 1986. I called it the nigga they couldn't kill. Oh. Yeah, it, he was supposed to be, uh, he raped a white woman, and uh, they, they, they tried to electrocute him, but it didn't work. And he became sort of a, a cult Cena? hero. No, not that one. That was the other the awful one. But, and then they tried to hang him, and they tried to do all this stuff. And I had a lot of training day in me. And it was, there were some uh, Jewish people in the, in the, in the audition, and, and I said, yeah. They said, no, it's funny. It's like they hang them, and then they can't. I said, yeah, like you bring some Jewish people into a room, and, you, and you, they think it's a shower, but it's gas. Oh. And they said, right. I said, right, that ain't funny. Mm. So to me, it wasn't funny about putting a rope around my right. MF and neck <laughs> either. I made a point. The guy was like, oh, who the hell is this little nigga <laughs> talking like this? So anyway, make a long story long. <laughs> I, I called Sydney and I was sick because he told me to call him. If I, you know, I call, I was I said, man, they offered me six hundred thousand dollars to play the nigga you, you, they couldn't kill. <laughs> and he said, I'm not going to tell you what to do. He said, I'm not going to tell you that, Denzel. He says, but I can tell you this: the first two or three or four films you do in this business will dictate how you're perceived in yes. this business. Mm -hmm. So you make a decision. You know, he didn't tell me what to do, and I give him credit for that. And I turned it down, and six months later, I got Cry Freedom and got an Oscar nomination. Unamused, he walked away from a hefty paycheck for a role that would have stirred up controversy. Smart move, as he ended up scoring an Oscar nomination for his work in Cry Freedom. Denzel's refusal to accept offensive roles pushed by Hollywood top dogs showcases his true grit. Oprah Winfrey, the iconic black TV host, is under fire for allegedly playing the Hollywood puppet game, using fellow black actors and actresses to amass her billion-dollar empire. Recent criticism has intensified as 50 Cent and Denzel Washington have teamed up to shine a light on what they claim is the exploitation of black actresses by Oprah. 50 Cent, a vocal critic, has joined the ongoing dispute between Taraji P. Henson and Oprah, asserting that Winfrey has a pattern of using individuals and then discarding them. This trend has sparked numerous conspiracy theories and backlash against Oprah, with 50 Cent consistently calling her out for years. 50 Cent is boldly standing in Monique's corner, accusing Oprah and Tyler Perry of sabotaging her career by lowballing her for her role in Precious. Now, he's on the warpath against Oprah, accusing her of ruthlessly wrecking people's careers for her own gain. Taraji P. Henson has joined the fray, recently calling out Oprah for underpaying in a new movie, The Color Purple. The clash brings to the forefront the stark disparities between black billionaires like Oprah and figures like Jeff Bezos. Taraji sheds light on the persistent challenges faced by black actors in Hollywood, emphasizing the ongoing struggles with pay disparity and inequality within the movie industry. 50 Cent is also speaking on why he's got beef with Oprah Winfrey. According to the rapper, the feud began when Oprah, on her U.S. talk show, publicly condemned his lyrics, deeming them misogynist and accusing him of glorifying gun violence. In his new book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter, 50 Cent reveals his initial desire to be on Oprah's show to prove to his grandmother that he had achieved greatness. However, things took a turn when Oprah publicly slammed him, and he didn't take it lightly. So, she ain't never going to have me on that show. I'm never going to reach that platform, which is confirmation of you being a huge success. So I just said, okay, if we can't be friends, then at least let's be enemies. In the ongoing feud between 50 Cent and Oprah Winfrey, things got real when the rapper named his dog after the veteran star, publicly declaring that her fanbase consisted solely of elderly white women. Despite later establishing a semblance of friendship, 50 Cent never saw eye to eye with Winfrey's condemnation of his lyrics. Defending his artistry, he argued against limitations on his expression, asserting, Are you going to tell a painter what to paint? I'm an artist. Why am I limited to what you feel should be said? The rapper went on to challenge Winfrey's actions, accusing her of going going after black men. In a December Instagram post, he threw shade at the media mogul, linking her to controversies surrounding sexual assault allegations against Michael Jackson and Russell Simmons. I don't understand why Oprah is going after black men, he wrote. No Harvey Weinstein, no Epstein, just Michael Jackson and Russell Simmons. This sakes is sad. These documentaries are publicly convicting their targets. It makes them guilty till proven innocent. Despite later establishing a semblance of friendship, 50 Cent isn't holding back on his disagreement with Oprah Winfrey's criticism of his lyrics. Admitting that his words are indeed misogynistic, he fires back, 
questioning the imposition of limitations on his art. In defense, he compares himself to a painter, stating, Are you going to tell a painter what to paint? I'm an artist. Why am I limited to what you feel should be said? Unapologetically, he points out the hypocrisy in film and television, where art imitates life, suggesting that Winfrey might be turning a blind eye to similar situations portrayed in other forms of media. So, after knowing everything about Hollywood's treatment of black people, what do you think about Denzel Washington confronting Oprah for her double standards?